Good morning everyone. Welcome to another episode of the vlog. Today we're gonna talk about a brand called Karl Suchi and Söhne. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. As you can see, I've uh, landed in Klagenfurt, or maybe you haven't seen yet, but um, yeah, I, it's the next day. Um, I came here to Klagenfurt from yesterday, and um, here are the clips from the drive. It was really, really cool and a really nice winter wonderland here in Carinthia. So enjoy that, and we'll get to the uh, Kalzuchi brand in just a second. Ford and I forgot my keys. Ah. Yeah, so I'm here in Klagenfurt at the Hirsch production facility on a Saturday. And um, you will see I'm getting dark and it's super, yeah, it's super empty here. Maybe we can catch a glimpse. Yeah, we're here because I was um, shooting the Karl Suchi watches yesterday and um, or we were shooting the Karl Suchi watches yesterday and um, yeah, we'll talk about the watches in just a second. I need to get some products out of our stock and then, then we'll dive into one of my favorite Austrian brands because we have two very cool brands and uh, I like the second one as well very much they've just launched their newest piece on their Instagram I'll show it here and um, I'm gonna talk about Karzuki in just a second because it's a great brand and a great story and the watches are incredible so yeah Finally, we get to talk about the brand I was teasing on earlier, actually yesterday, because, um, well, as many of you noticed, today is a new day compared to the first couple of clips. Um, nevertheless, we will talk about Karl Suchi and Söhne watches right now. To dive right into it, we need to learn a bit about the heritage of the brand. And um, Karl Suchi is a very, very special brand as such because the brand was officially founded by Karl Suchi himself, um, but um, it was founded in 1822. So together with his sons, he was the most important watch and clockmaker of the Austro-Hungarian... Wait a second. Okay, not so important. So together, uh, Karl Zuchy and his sons, they were one of the most important um, watch and clockmakers of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. They even made watches or clocks basically at that time for the emperor himself and um, people like uh, Sigmund Freud were clients as well. So the brand has a lot of heritage and has a big mystery um, regarding their clients also. 
Unfortunately, there has been a break um, of the brand because um, starting in 1914, the brand was, um, well, yeah, it disappeared. Um, they stopped making watches for quite some time. And in 2016, it was revived. So luckily um, for me, in uh, 2019, um, I visited Basel World. Um, well, doesn't exist anymore. But at that time it was still there. It was still full of watch enthusiasts. It was full of brands and people who are going to create brands or reviving brands. And um, I had the chance to tag along with some of my fellow um, journalist friends. And um, they introduced me to the brand Karl Suchi. This was the time where I um, had the opportunity to get to know the person who was responsible for reviving the brand, um, namely Robert Punkenhofer. And um, well, yeah, he's an enthusiast when it comes to art. He's an enthusiast when it comes to um, Viennese design. And so he had the idea to revive the brand in 2016. The brand as such is cool because um, the watches, and you might have already seen them, because, of course, um, they're very minimalistic. They combine the Viennese elegance with Swiss precision, so they have great movements, Vauchamp movements, um, that are created in Switzerland by a fantastic watchmaker, namely Marc Yeni, and um, they are inspired by the Viennese elegance of time. The two watches I have here today, and um, I was fortunate enough to be able to work with the brand um, earlier this year, where I had the opportunity to try on the two steel versions of the Waltz number no. one. And uh, today I have two other pieces of the brand that I would like to show to you. And these two are the uh, DLC covered um, Valz number one, which is a uh, beautiful watch in the DLC coated. Let me see. Up. And I have a second watch, a very, very, very special piece. And um, for that. Uh, for that, we need the correct attire. So let me show you the watch. I mean, come on. This is the Waltz number no. one skeleton. And it's a gorgeous piece uh, of uh, well, of design, of course, and watchmaking as well. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the movement because for me, the movements are not the most important part. Um, I'm more of a style guy, so I would like to talk about the style as such. Um, specifically for the Waltz number no. one, it's a very, very elegant and minimalistic design, um, and it has an emotional twist. The, the fun, part about this watch is the moving seconds disc. And if I say moving seconds disc, it's really a disc that moves. And um, yeah, you might not notice it at all because of the, because of the dial. Um, and um, it's just cool. The great thing about the moving seconds disc is that um, it has a inspiration from Viennese culture because in Vienna, the people do not count seconds. So it's not important to have a seconds hand on the watch. It doesn't matter if you're a couple of seconds late or a couple of seconds early. So the only thing that really matters is the minutes and the hours. And this is something that the brand has incorporated into their design. If you look at the guilloché pattern on the dial, then you will see that there's the same pattern on the seconds disc, which makes it look like that the seconds disc 
is seamlessly integrated into the dial. But if you look closely, you will see that it turns and every full minute, the seconds disc aligns with the dial pattern, integrates nicely. The same principle was used for the skeleton version of this watch of the Balz number one, because what they did here, they used the pattern on the dial and skeletonized a couple of these lines, making it look like the same as with the classical versions of the Waltz number one. And this goes for the seconds disc as well, making it a skeletonized watch, but with a twist, and that's the twist on the dial, resembling the design language of the brand. And I think they've done an incredible job doing so. And um, for me, they are, uh, Karl Suchi and Söhne are one of the most exciting watches I have had um, uh, my hands on, not in terms of the watchmaking process as such, but in terms of the design language and the integration of these high quality um, criteria. So yes, if you're looking for one of these watches, then go ahead and check out Karl Suchi and Söhne. Um, I'll have everything in the description down below. And um, if you're a good person, check them out on Instagram at Karl Suchi. They will tell them I sent you and they will be super happy. That's it about the Karl Suchi watch. I think I'll go outside and take a couple of shots with these watches because um, yeah, they're cool as long as I still have them. Something I missed saying is that they also do quite well as dress watches. So if you're looking for a subtle dress watch that has this thing, then you're on the right path. I could stare at this second disc for ages. It's so cool to look at. Just love the motion. That's it for today. I hope you liked the, well, the review of the Karl Suchi Waltz number one. Um, if you like to learn more about the brand, um, click the links down below. There's everything you need. In that sense, again, please don't forget to subscribe because it really helps me grow this channel and get more content for you guys. And um, of course, as always, if you feel like it, put a thumbs up. Thanks for watching again. See you the next time. Bye-bye.